We're going to bring you a message today about what happens when we turn to the old paths. We need desperately in this generation that we are living in currently to return back to the old paths and walk therein and not wander away from the old past, the foundation of uh, our heritage and our fo the foundation of our, uh, co our lives, our cornerstone. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Jeremiah 6, 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand in, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Uh, when we left our church uh, many decades ago, we had a big, huge explosion, I guess you could say. And, uh, people went their different ways and stuff. And uh, mom and dad went to visiting other churches and found that they were not satisfied or comfortable so what they had done was sit down with brother Earl Williams William Earl Williams and his wife Mammy and they constructed a little get together and uh, formed a little uh, living room uh, study I call it a living room revival church thing myself, but it was uh, made in our living room down in Portland Street in Old South Haven, really the New South Haven, yeah, New South Haven District part of it. And Al and I, every uh, Sunday morning, would have to get the, uh, we got a pulpit out. <clears throat> and chairs and all that uh, eventually and then uh, we had to put it back uh, Sunday night we had to get uh, when we got home from school on uh, Wednesday we had to pull it out and pull it back in after Wednesday night service but before we got to that stage uh, these four people would come or uh, Mammy and Pops would come over and he'd sit down and open up scriptures and they would talk about the Bible and such and uh, word got out and uh, for those that had left the church came over and started visiting seeing what we was doing and it started growing adding to and then uh, we had to move because the neighbors couldn't find any place to park <laughs> and uh, so we had to moved to a place in Holbert and across the street from there was a gas station so he spent some time there then Hubert got word of a elderly couple that died and they uh, the men got together and uh, uh, bought the church or made payments on the uh, old house and we turned it into uh, a church and we stayed there for the longest period of time and then uh, Effie Miller came in and she passed away being an only woman and she didn't have very much family so she donated most of her life savings to the church then we bought a uh, church building in Porter and we had stayed there until 2000 and uh, 17 where in 2000 uh, New Year's Eve New Year's Day I became pastor of it in 2000 but going back to this this is the 
verse of scripture that was picked out we used when we started Old Pathway Baptist Church. This is the uh, verse of scripture that uh, birthed, you could say, Old Pathway. Here is the Lord saying this to whosoever will. Stand ye in the ways. It's hard for people to just stand still and just not do much of anything today. We're always running to and fro in the book of Jeremiah chapter 5. They, he said that there'd be time where the people were running to and fro, doing this, doing that, always busy, always having things to do. And throughout the Bible, if you ever read what God has said or what the Lord has said or what uh, Jesus has said, they keep wanting us to be patient, stand still, just wait upon Him. And it seems like in today's generation, that is the hardest thing to do. He said, stand in the ways and see. Now, He's not talking here just seeing with your carnal eye, your carnal vision, your, uh, your fleshly eye or what. He's talking here spiritually speaking, spiritually seeing. And for the majority of people today, they have never been born again. They, their uh, spiritual senses is still dead inside. Here he's saying, stand and see, spiritually speaking, and ask for the old paths. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. He said, ask for the old paths. Where is it at? Ask around. See for yourself. Examine for your exact selves. Where is the good way? The reason why it is the good way. It is because it is the way of God. It is the way of Christ. It is uh, not the way of uh, the just the natural man here. It's the way of God himself. We always say God is good. Uh, there was a man that came up to Jesus in the book of Mark. And he said, good master. And Jesus looked at him and said, why call you me good? There's no good but God God's the only one that's good we say God is good all the time and all the time God is good here and it is so it is so that he is good now and walk therein notice first of all he said stand number, number two he said see then two he had asked for the old pass and then now he's saying, walk therein. We can walk in the good way. We can walk in the way, uh, like we've said in the book of Isaiah, uh, the way called holiness, the way God wanted us to walk. The, the way of holiness is not a uh, religion. It is not uh, uh, people getting together. It is basically... Uh, a way that we can all walk, all denominations ought to walk in that way. And I'm not saying all of us ought to be holiness, mind you, don't get me wrong on that, but he said we ought to walk in the way of holiness. We are supposed to walk in the good way now. Walk therein. And ye shall find. Now listen to this. You shall find something. This is uh, number five here. Number five is you're going to find something. When you do this, you're going to find something that you cannot find in the world. It doesn't exist in the worldly system. It doesn't exist in the generation that you're living in. You can go seek high and low, to and fro and all that, and you'll never find what you're looking for in this uh, uh, world. Uh, there was a rock and roll song uh, when I was a kid growing up in high school about uh, they couldn't find what they're looking for. I wonder if they ever did find what they're looking for. If they're searching in the world, they're not going to find what they're going to look for. But when you go to God, you will find what you're uh, looking for. He said, and you shall find rest 
for your souls. I want you to examine for just a minute before we go any farther about that. Rest for your souls. When you come to the point in your life and you find rest for your souls, that word rest means peace. When you find rest for your souls, you then are in need of nothing. You're complete. You're whole. And those are just two words I'm throwing out there. Complete, whole. And you can look up uh, synonyms uh, for them and go on. And you can find uh, peace, rest. Peace, rest, complete. And to be made whole. And once you are at that place, you're happy. People have come up to me and asked me, what makes me happy? What makes me happy? What drives my life? What motivates my life? Well, when you find these things, you hold on to them and treasure them and let no man take them from you. And you build off these things and you build your life centered around God. Not these things, but God. God is the center of our lives. And He is the cornerstone. He is the foundation. And he, we build all from there. From Him. And here's what they said. Here's what Jeremiah's generation had to say. Here's what, here's what his nation and his what his people had to say about what the Lord had said but they said we will not walk therein and it's the same thing in this generation and in this nation and in this uh, worldly system that we have got going on there they said and have said the same thing today we will not walk therein in other words, we will not find what we're looking for in you, Lord, in you, God, but we will find it in ourselves. We will make our own path. We will make our own ways. We will do our own things. And we will not need you to do that. This goes uh, without... I mean, you go through the history of the global world and you see this over and over over, over again uh, we go back to the book of Genesis and we go back to a time where this first happened here on this earth where all the nations came together and they had this man rise up and he was going to be the leader. And these people and this worldly system then meets the criteria and is the same as what we're seeing formed here in this global economy, here in this global uh, world today. We see all of this coming together as it did once again. It seems like throughout the generations of the world, they have a point where they all try to come together and fit and come together and excel uh, and uh, exile God and push God completely out of the picture. I want that to sink in. I believe we need to return to the old past, especially the church. When we return to the old past, then we will return to faithfulness. How faithful are you right now? How faithful to you are to your money? I'll, I'll throw that out there because in this worldly system, money is the number one God out of Satan right now. 
Uh, faithful. How many are you faithful to your jobs? How many of you will get up and you go to work and you're definitely sick and you need to stay home in bed, but you'll get up and you'll go to work? How many of us are faithful to our habits? How many of us are especially faithful to our sinful habits? Do we have any? And how many of us are faithful to each other? Jesus told the church in Samaria in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you, and I will give thee a crown of life. Be faithful to me all through your life unto, the, unto your death, and I will reward you. I will give you the crown of life. The least we can do is be faithful. In Corinthians, in First Corinthians chapter four, verse two, it says, "Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man is found faithful." Now, in everything that you do in this Christian life, and in your own life, you must be found faithful as a steward. If you're going to be a servant of the Lord. You're going to have to be found faithful in what he says. Whatever he says, top priority. It has to be done. No matter what the cost. And at times, the cost is so great. Right now, you don't think you could pay the cost at times. But we as people uh, need to set aside our uh, flesh and crucify it. And do the will of the Lord. We need to return. We need to be. To, we need to faithful to God. We need to be faithful to our calling. We need to be faithful to the word of work of God. We need to be faithful to the word of God, and we need to be faithful to the service of God as. And to the assembly. Now here. Number one. Again we need to be faithful. To God. That's number one. We need to be faithful to God. Number two. We need to be faithful to our calling. What has he called you to do? What has he required you to do? We need to do that. To the utmost of our abilities. And to our talents. As we preached uh, not too long ago about our talents. We need to be uh, found faithful giving our talents and giving our uh, calling to God. We need to be faithful to the work of God. What is the work of God? It is to go out and save souls. It is to go out and uh, um, bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. It is to establish peace upon the earth. To have just three things. Uh, that his will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, that is his work for us. Uh, when Jesus is here, he had to do the work that was required on him. And he finished his work. We need to be faithful to the word of God. Now, the Word of God is a twofold thing now. The Word of God is not just the Bible, reading, this, uh, reading it and applying it to our lives and mentally and physically and uh, doing it as we're supposed to be doing. But the Word of God is also Jesus Christ. We are to be faithful in our relationship with God now. And lastly here, Number five, we need to be faithful to the service of God and to the assembly. The service of God. And I'm not just talking going to church and going through a service uh, for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I'm talking to the whole service, the whole meat of the service. 
and to the assembly which is the church. We need to return to the old past and to get away from this formalism and moder modernism and the new fad of Christianity. We need to return to faithfulness. When Paul came to die in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he said, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. How many of us, when we go to die, we can look up to whoever is standing there, family members, what, friends, whatever, and look at him, and like Paul told Timothy, I have fought a good fight. I have taken it to Satan. I have taken it to the limit. I have finished my course. God has given me an assignment to do, and I have finished his calling. I have finished his work in my life. And I have kept the faith. The faith is what has kept me going all through the time he has called me in this service and now he's calling me back out and I will lay my talents upon uh, the altar I will lay my talents before him the righteous judge when we return to the old past we will return to the word of God Isaiah chapter 50 or 34 verse 16 says this Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out the word of the Lord and or the book of the Lord and read. The Bible exhorts us to read and study the word of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, the Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we return to the old past, we will return to reading the word of the word of God. Paul charges Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 13, until I come give attendance to reading, to exhorting, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee. So, so here he says, give attendance to reading. Give attendance to exhortation. Give attendance to doctrine. In other words, when it says here, uh, attendance, he's, he's basically meaning focus your attention. Give attendance, focus upon reading Focus and exhortation and focus in the doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, Timothy. Don't have your, uh, in other words, it's saying always do it when it comes time, especially when it comes time. Don't let everything else take away from it. And we live in a world today that we have every, we have 24 hours in a day. We have seven days in a week. We have around 30, 31 days in a month. In all this time that we have in, uh, in preparation to spend, we don't, how much time do we have to give to God in that space of time? In 24 hours, how much do you give to God? How much do you give to the work of God? In seven days that you have, six days you have to labor. In that time period, how much is given to God? Neglect not your gift. Exercise it. Uh, we are big fans. This generation is big into uh, going out and uh, working out and exercising and everything. This is a spiritual exercise. When you do your gifts, you're spiritually exercising it. How many of us 
do not exercise. Uh, and when we go to do things, we can't do it like other people. This is spiritually speaking here. Again, we exercise the body, and some of us way, do it way too much. And we focus on the body and all that. But spiritually, where would you stand? Where are you spiritually? So many people, so many religious people, are neglecting the, to read the Word of God, and they are neglecting to give that the gift that is within thee or within them. They are failing to keep themselves in the love of God and failing to find out from God's eternal precious word the things that he wants us to know. Now, how many of us would be considered failures in this life. We're failing. People like this are failing to keep themselves in the love of God. How do you keep yourselves in the love of God? Read the Word of God. Pray. Read the Word of God. Again. And failing for to find out of God's eternal pro precious words. This, His words are His promises to us. How precious are they indeed to our hearts and our souls? They ought to be more precious than anything of this world and worldly system. When we return to the old past, we will rebuke that which is wrong. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8 says, Reprove not the scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. A man that is wise, a man that is saved by the grace of God, he will appreciate a rebuke from the Word of God in the Spirit of God because that Spirit is, is, is basically the Spirit of love to him. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through uh, Four, Proverbs uh, 27 verse 5 says open rebuke is better than secret love Pops used to love that verse those of us who remember Earl Williams he used to say that a lot open rebuke is better than secret love Titus chapter 2 says and you read the last verse there and in 2nd and in 1st Timothy chapter 5 Verse t uh, 20, it says, Then that sin rebuke before all of the others that may fear. Put them under subjection. Put them in the ways that they need to go when they get out of line. When I was a young boy, my parents, when I got out of line, they whipped me. They had the right to, because I was out of line. I was insubordinate to their will. And God does the same thing. He that he loves, he rebukes and chastens. He might say, stop it once or twice, but then once he lowers the boom on you, he's not the one that to be blamed. We are, because he had told us. When we return to the old past, we will refuse False teachings, and there are lots of false teachings out there in the world and in the churches today, too. Or they call themselves churches. When we stand against false teachings, you cannot fellowship with all kinds of heresies and errors. If you stand, if you are standing for the word of God, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 says, But refuse profane of all wise fab fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. We are to exercise ourselves to godliness and not have nothing to do with 
all these false teachings, heresies, and errors. When we return to the old past, we will have the unction from the Holy One. We will be taught by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and we will know that we will know that which is of God. Jesus said, if a man do will do God's will, he will know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or of man. If we walk in the Spirit, let us and let the Spirit of God have dominion in us and over us and guiding us and leading us and studying the Word of God and desiring the old past. God would teach us from His Word that which is rightly that was right by the Spirit of God through the men of God. We will grasp the truth and return to the old paths. When we return to the old paths, we will run with patience the race that is set before us. We will uh, run this race. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Wherefore, seeing that we have are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endureth the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that it can that endureth such contra contritions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and in, in faint in your own minds. When we return to the old past, God will God will so charge us with the Spirit of God and the Word of God till we can run this race with patience set before us. We will realize that we are in a conflict with sin and the devil and we are not wrestling with flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, with spiritual wickedness in high places. When we return to the old past, we see that it is the last times and that we are living in the last days. And the great fa falling away is here. Apostles are all around us, apostolics are all around us. And it is charged us with to run the race with patience, the race that is set before us. In closing, when we return to the old past, we will rejoice in the Lord. Psalms chapter 9 verse 14 says, I will rejoice in thy salvation. Psalms 150, 135, verse 1 through five, 3. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. And ye shall stand in the house of the Lord and in the courts of the house of, the, of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto him. 
under his name, for he for it is pleasant. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Psalms 150. When we return to the old past, we will rest in the future. We will rest in the future. The word of the Lord has promised that we would do so when we see Him and we walk in to that place called heaven that we long to be at. Dear Lord, as we bow before the throne of grace, we thank you for this message again and again as you bring it to us that we might be rem reminded and to remember to walk in the old paths. Whether the world wants to or whether they don't, it is offered to them to come and let them reason together with you. But Lord, if they do not, they'll have to find, uh, find out at the end that you were right all along. For you know the, what's best for us when we do not know. God, lead direct these words to our hearts and souls. Let us grow stronger. Seeking out the old paths, walking in them, and forsaking them not throughout the rest of the course of our lives and the race that is set before us in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.